Okay. So, oh, here I am at the shop. I am working on the newest recovery rig in the fleet. Um, I'll pan around and show you. I've got some broken beadlock bolts on it. So I had to hammer out the nut, the little nut search, bolt the beadlock rings on and take the broken bolts out. So then I could eh, fix it. Anyway, so one minute. So the newest recovery rig is a little different and it's it's different for a reason. So I'll pan around here in a minute and show you what we got and explain why I'm going this route. So there it is. I will get some more shots up close and um, show you some things about it here in a little bit. But so the reason I went with the four-door JK. <laughs> so the reason I went with the four-door JK is seating and there's a lot of there's a lot of recoveries that do not require a tow truck as much fun as the tow truck is but you don't have to always have the wrecker it's not always needed um i have so many recoveries that i do that uh that I take the tow truck and throw on the trailer and haul it out somewhere and unload it and drive way out somewhere to pull a car out of the sand. And I don't really need the tow truck for that. Um, I, I just don't. Um, everybody, of course, has to say, well, can't you just drive the tow truck? Yeah, yeah, I can, but I mean, I try to save the wear and tear. So then if I've got to go pull a car out of the sand, that's 20 or 30 miles north of Moab then I have to load the truck up fuel the truck or fuel my pull truck and fuel the tow truck and everything and then haul it out there then unload it then da, da, da. so having something like this which leads to the recovery I'm doing in the morning kind of recovery uh, anyway so backstory to this one the other night I got a call from the next county over um, that they were sending search and rescue out to get somebody and because severe dehydration and this and that and uh, um, the, the one of the bikes was disabled and so they asked if I was available to go get it um, I said yeah so I came in, I got the truck and trailer, uh, I'm sorry, I came in and got the tow truck and the recovery trailer and was gonna head out there and fueled up, got water, got all the stuff, head out there. Um, from what I'd heard, it was two groups. It was two guys with one guy that was severely dehydrated and I believe the helicopter was gonna go look for them and get him taken care of. And then uh, the other one had a disabled bike or something was wrong with it. Anyway, so I went in there. Um, I went to the GPS coordinates that they gave me, that Search and Rescue had gave me, or I'm sorry, Dispatch had gave me. I went in there and um, didn't find them, didn't find anybody in anywhere. So I found phone service and called Dispatch and was like, hey, you know, I, I don't know where these guys are. So they said search and rescue was heading out in a side by side out there to the location. So I met up with them. They said that the coordinates were in a different spot. Um, there's this one bad section of trail out there and they said, you know, we're not, we're not comfortable taking a side by side in there and we don't know if you are. And I said, I'll, I'll gladly go in there and look for them if we need to. And then they decided to call it off and said that they would send the helicopter out in the morning because it made more sense than us randomly looking around in the dark. I mean, you could drive right next to somebody and they not see you. 
I mean, in the canyons and stuff, you know. Um, so we called it off and um, came home. Uh, the, the gentleman contacted me this morning about me taking them back in there. He, they don't want recovered. They just want a ride back into their bikes. They hiked out. They need fuel. And then they need a day or so to recharge from being dehydrated. Um, but I told him about being out there looking for him. And, and he said that uh, he said, we, didn't, we didn't call anybody. So somebody drove by and seen these people having issues and they decided to come out and call search and rescue and 911 and all this stuff. And I, I've had this issue before. I've had people call me and go, hey, there's this guy out there on this trail and he's having trouble. Um, you, you need to get out there. So the first time I did it, I ran right out there, ran right out there. And I get there and they're like, who called you? We, we don't we don't need your help we're 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 doing this you know who are you recovering and i was like well i was called for this well we didn't call you okay which which is fine they you know i'd rather people fix you know fix their stuff or have that knowledge and, and be able to do that that's fine i, I don't care but so now i'm I, I when people call me and say hey these people need your help okay did they tell you to call me did they say, hey, get back to phone service and call somebody, please? Well, no, but what else are they going to do? I, I don't know, but that's not my decision to make. And I, I can't just go gallivanting all around the countryside looking for people that, that don't want my help or don't need it. So, I, 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 yeah. So, anyway... I'm going to take them in in the morning, but that's the whole reason for the four-door Jeep. Um, that I have room for people and gear, and I can take them back into their bikes. They don't need their bikes recovered. If they did, I could still hook the trailer, the little recovery trailer behind the Jeep, pull it in there, and and come back out. I mean, so I don't always need a tow truck. I love my tow truck, and I wouldn't trade it for anything, and it's not ever going anywhere. But I just need to have better options and expand my capabilities and my my response time, I guess. Because, like I said, loading up and this and that where I can just come and jump in the Jeep and head out there and go get somebody. Because a lot of times when I go pull cars out of the sand, that's that's all they need. They don't, they're just tourists that are coming through that got stuck in sand in, in, a, in a car. They, they don't care about the tow truck. They don't know about the tow truck. They don't know anything about it. They, they don't want to... They just want out of sand. They just want to keep on their journey and keep going. So that's that's the kind of thing where this will come in handy. So um, the ba a little backstory to this Jeep. Um, this is my buddy's Jeep, and I did some trade work, traded him some stuff, and and got it. And so I've done a lot of I've done almost all the work on this. Um, this is my first version of a JK bumper that I, I built in the shop and made work on here and kind of tucks it in, frees the radiator up so for cooling issues and all that. So this is, yeah, this is all stuff I've done for him. So it's, it means a lot, you know, vehicles mean a lot to me. <laughs> everything, everything has a story. So what I, I was thinking of doing this anyway, and what I was going to do is my old green truck, my, my old, uh, my old pull truck. I was going to turn it into it. And then I was like, okay, well, you know, I got to, I I'd need to lift. I'd need some tires. I'd need lockers. I'd need this. I'd need that. I, well, this is already ready to go. And now the green truck I can leave as a backup if I need a extra tow vehicle for a trailer or something like that. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the plan right at the moment. So that's going to be, that's going to be the new recovery rig. And, uh, we're gonna go in and get those guys, hopefully get some footage, and uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got, there's a couple things with this Jeep. I gotta fix the, uh, the winch. The, it works, it got smashed, it's had a rough life. Anyway, uh, I gotta wire in the rear locker. Um, I swapped out the rear axle because there was an issue with the old one. So I put in one that has a, locker in it 
So it has an air locker in the front and an electric locker in the rear. Um, the only problem I have with this Jeep, and, and, and Joe, I love you to death, but the only problem I have with this Jeep is that damn snorkel. So, but if we take the snorkel away, there's a big hole cut in the hood. <laughs> so, ten percent rule. You gotta be ten percent smarter than what you're trying to operate. So, let's go see what we can find. Now, the cool thing about having an off-road shop, of course, the weeds have gotten out of control with how much rain we've got this year, is the used parts section. So. What do we have for JK stuff? Ooh. If I can get up here without breaking my neck. Oh. Yeah, it even says Hemi. It does not have a Hemi, but hey, it's not even a Rubicon. But hey, hey, hey. What do we got here? Oh, here we are out at Lockhart Basin. Uh, brought these guys out here to get their bikes, brought them some fuel some parts and everything. And uh, first uh, official recovery-ish thing. Well, second um, with the Jeep. Rode out here, did great. Um, oop, a little bit of sunshine in the face. Yeah, everything's doing good. All the more people. So here we are coming out. We just left Lockhart Basin and I'm following the bikes out. So they ended up um, walking out. They got to where they um, sorry. So they got to where they uh, they were beat, they were tired. They couldn't ride their bikes anymore, uh, which happens out here. Um, the heat, the heat out here will catch you off guard because you know you got to wear a jacket in the morning, and then all of a sudden it's 95 degrees. And you know if you're new to the area or whatever, you know if you're not familiar with it, it can happen. It's not a big deal. So they got to where they could see the Chicken Corners Road. And they seen some jeeps and traffic, so they hiked down there and caught a ride back to town because they were just they were just beat. And so they just needed a ride back out here with some fuel and uh, I think some oil and just a couple things and, and just come out and get their bikes. So yeah, it happens out here, it happens a lot. So that's, that's where this Jeep's kind of handy for the whole aspect of, you know, carrying a few people because the wrecker seats two. <laughs> Two and and Lily for now until she gets too big. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, it, I, I really think this would be a good addition to the fleet. Um, it has its purpose, and so here we are. Did back out.
Some new, uh, I don't know what to call them, hex traps, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, they keep the vehicle from swaying that I'm pulling. And like I said, everybody, everybody tells me to do a tow bar, do a solid mount, this and that. Um, it does not work for the for the trail stuff that I do. It uh, it all sounds good in theory. It doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Um, so. What I do is this soft strap. I used to have just a strap that I stuck on here. Um, it was like lifting straps or whatever that I used. That uh, that I used, and um, I started using the kinetic rope. Um, I would take an old kinetic rope that I damaged or whatever, and I would cut it up and use it for these pigtails or for this, and it works great. It takes a lot of the jar out of the into the strap and it really helps out so I'm just kind of been doing this it works really good um, right at the moment I'm trying to use the factor 55 threading symbol this is kind of a new approach for me so I'm going to see how well it works Uh, comes good. Back to there, it's really a pain in the butt. I, I, I do it mostly with uh, old old ropes. Um, so it's a little easier to get it through. And this one's kind of a brand new rope that I just cut up. <laughs> uh, but this is Voodoo's new Santeria series. Santeria? I don't know. Anyway, Santeria series. And they come with the, the coating on the end of the strap. So I think that's going to help out a lot because um, the, the, the saw shackles have actually cut through sometimes. That's what happened this time right here. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is uh, this will hook here and then that will leave my X strap having this protective sheathing on it. So we're going to try it out, see how it works. Looks good on paper. It has a good theory. Um, just this. Like through itself and then thread it into itself which is going to be a horribly horribly fun time it was not a new jar of Vicks paper but she is curious so she checked the expiration date January All these older ones that I've done that uh, are way more pliable. <laughs> 